F of Terrorism Prohibition and Prevention Act says I cannot be tried in Nigeria. That's the law of Nigeria. Yes. I can never be tried in any court of law in Nigeria. That's what the law says. Anybody standing in trial or coming to try me is a terrorist. That's what their law says. Section what? As simple as that. Section 2, subsection 3F of Terrorism Prevention and Prohibition Act. That's what it says. Any court considered to try me is committed an act of terrorism. Yes. Very clear. You cannot violate a treaty that Nigeria entered into and then come to try that very person. It's not done anywhere in the world. So, so you must be aware of that. So that is why there is all these ridiculous delays. That is what Supreme Court said. I did not jump bail. My home was invaded. They came to kill me and I survived. They came to Kenya to kidnap me, brought me back to this country and seeking to try me, which the law says cannot happen. You cannot violate a treaty that Nigeria entered into and then hope to stand on that illegality to conduct a trial is not done anywhere in the world. And what happened in my case? Nobody had, no, there's no exception. No exception whatsoever. That's what the law says. Section 12 of the Constitution, what does it say? Any treaty ratified by Nigeria becomes law. It's law. You cannot change it. It doesn't matter what they do. All these shenanigans is just pure rubbish. You never stand. Not with me. I believe in justice and fairness. That's all. Anyway, it's not really shocking to see Nnamdi Kanu still in detention. It's a testament of the falling standard of the Nigerian judiciary. The judiciary is now a pound being used by politicians to advance their cause. What exactly is the crime of Nnamdi Kanu? Since when did calling for secession become a crime? So many persons in Nigeria, you have some the borough and even some northern as they've called for separation. Namdi Kano has not killed anyone. Why is he still being detained? He was granted bail. The military invaded his house and killed some members of his family. What do you expect him to do? Stay right there and be killed? How do you call someone who ran away from being killed by the Nigerian military? How do you say that he jumped bail? Nigeria judiciary proceeding is, is surprising. It just, it just can't stop amazing me. How lawful is it for an accused person to still be held back in detention on proceedings after being dismissed and acquitted of any criminal charges? But, but that's what you wrote. You said here, my law, that the defendant has now applied for bail. Now, as I said earlier, bail is a litigation of the, of the court taking into consideration all the conditions laid down in... Uh, Breaching the constitution to punish someone does not portray the judiciary in a good light. It shows how weak the judiciary has become. I know many of you may not like Namdi Kanu. This is not about him, but about the rule of law in Nigeria. Just last week, the British media bl blast Prince Henry and Meghan Markel for visiting Nigeria. They openly said on a live television that Nigeria is a lawless country. A TV presenter has even compared Nigeria to Venezuela in times of lawlessness on a CNN program. Comments like this paint Nigeria in a bad light. A country that is seen as a lawless country will not attract foreign investors. Our judiciary is helping the politicians to soil the image of Nigeria. They should know better than the politicians because they understand the rule of law, both local and international. Namdi Kandu continued detention has worried many, both home and abroad, that a US veteran had to write to the Nigerian judiciary, urging the presiding judge to obey the Supreme Court judgment on Kanu, whom he described as a prisoner of conscience. Worry was expressed over the judge's refusal to grant Kanu Bay application and plea to be transferred to the correctional center instead of the solitary confinement at Abuja International Headquarters of the Department of State Service, where he has been held since June 2021, following his extraordinary rendition from Kenya. The judge refused to comply with the Supreme Court judgment and lack of willingness to interpret the constitution fairly are truly embarrassing and humiliating for the judicial system in Nigeria and the whole world. Kanu should have been taken to the correctional center not kept in a federal government privately owned detention center where his conversation with his lawyers and family members are always monitored. The judge bias will not be looked upon favorable in the annals of history. The judge actions show that she is following his script. She does not have the jurisdiction over this case and have allowed the federal government to bring further all sort of trump of charges against Namdi Kanu. And of course they know that he's innocent. The same person was unjustly arrested and even after fleeing his home due to government invasion, he continued to face unjust imprisonment. His parents were also subject to physical, emotional and mental torture leading to their death. 
how do you hold someone in court studies since 2021, June 2021, without trial? How do you explain this? This is a reason why Nigeria is being looked upon as a lawless country because we fail to obey the simple rule of law. How do you convince foreign investors to come into your country when they know there is no rule of law? Rule of law is an intangible asset. It is what protects all and sundry. And the judiciary in Nigeria is laughable. It is a shame. It is a total disgrace. Because the judiciary was meant to uphold the integrity and sacrosanctity of the law. The judiciary is the voice of the voiceless. It is the hope of the common man. That is what we were told. But unfortunately, the judiciary has become a tool in the hand of politicians. You are claiming that he jumped bail. He was released on bail and his home was attacked by the Nigerian military. It's there in the record. His properties were destroyed. His parents were physically abused. The same parents are dead now. And you're saying that he jumped bail. Were you expecting him to see stand there while his life was at risk? Now you went and kidnapped him in Kenya, brought him back in Nigeria. Whereas you're breaching the international law, the international protocol, the same treaty you signed, you are breaching it. And that is the reason why they don't want to try and come in any court in Nigeria. They keep on bringing on trump on charges and keep delaying the case because they cannot charge him. He's innocent. Charging in and the means that they are breaching the international treaty. This is what Nigeria is known for. Showing and displaying kangaroo mindset. Showing and displaying lack of human rights. Human rights and the rule of law. And you expect the country to move forward. And you expect foreigners to come into your country and invest. Whereas you keep displaying the country in a bad light. You keep destroying the image of the country in the international community. This is so wrong. This is not about Namdekano or the Igbos. It's about the fate of this country. Because the truth is the politicians will do everything within their power to remain relevant. They don't care about the country. They don't care about you. But the problem is they don't suffer for the consequences of what they do when they are in power. You and I suffer for all these things. And whatever they are doing in Inam the they are setting the precedent. It's Inam the Kandu today. It can be anybody tomorrow. Somebody can come into power tomorrow and say, okay, the former president did this, the former judiciary did this, I'm going to do the same thing. That is how we enable crime. That is how we enable lawlessness. That is how we enable anarchy in our society. If we don't speak up in one mind, Nam the Kanu is being unfairly judged. He's been unfairly incarcerated. And every well meaning Nigerian should call for his release. Because there is absolutely nothing that he has done. He hasn't come out, he has not co committed any crime. He's not a terrorist. He did not kill anyone. All he asked for was cessation. If you believe that Nigeria is one, conduct a referendum. Let the people speak. Do they want to be one? Do they want to still be in this same country? Conduct a referendum. That is what is, is needed. You can't force people to be one, whereas your actions and inactions show that they are not one. How are they one when politically the country is divided along ethnic lines? Everything about this country is divided. There is nothing that shows that Nigeria is one. The only thing that keeps Nigeria one is when they want to share the collective resources of this country together. That is the only time they remember that Nigeria is one. But when it comes to distributing development, Evenly across the region, Nigeria is not one. When it comes to making the people, giving dividends of democracy to the people, Nigeria is not one. And you keep saying Nigeria is one. If you want to know if Nigeria is one, conduct a referendum. Conduct a referendum. You cannot force the people to be one. If some set of people say they want to leave, grant them their wish. Simple as that. You cannot go and jail a man that tells you wants to, to, to leave. It's not possible. That's the reason why the country is not moving forward. Because everyone in the country, they are not working in unity, they are not working in harmony. For progress, sources and prosperity to thrive anywhere in a country, even among the people, the people must live in harmony, they must live in unity, they must work together. Now the question is, for how long are you going to keep unhappy people in a country that they don't want to belong to? For how long? How long will this continue? Namdi Kandu should be released. He has done no wrong, he has done no harm, he has not committed any crime and the judiciary should respect the law of the land and the international law and release Namdi Kano. They should stop being used as pounds by politicians to destabilize this country. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video. But, uh, but that's what you wrote, you said here, my law, that the defendant has now applied for bail. 
Now, as I have said earlier, there is a dedication of the, of the court taking into consideration all the constitutions laid down in, uh, in Muhammad Abaja v. State. At this stage, I am of the opinion that to make that to make or take a stand on the bail application without first hearing and determining the issue that is glaring in the, in the face, which is the absence of the defendant from the court since 25th of April 2017 until he was produced on the 29th of June. My Lord, which was exactly what the Supreme Court did. They said that he did not jump bail. These criminals came to my house to kill me. That's what the Supreme Court said. This is in your own building. Your own God, my God. So I cannot understand my mom why my trial will be conducted contrary to the constitution of Nigeria that said I must have free and unfettered access to my to my counsel. It's here. This is the law.